Welcome to Texas, you're entering the best state I'll blow your chest apart and eat my dinner off your breastplate I'm an epidemic and my case is full blown Getting drunk and doing 120 in the school zone What's good YouTube, it's your boy 2K the God, my man Sess Welcome to the Gods of Boxing Talk Now, there's a whole lot of shit to talk about man A whole lot of news we gotta catch up on so, of course, this segment is going to be a what's hot. And what's hot right now. Yo, David Habe bullshit, B. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, if Adrian Broner pulls some shit like this, dog, like, niggas would be all over him right now. But if, mm -hmm. since I guess he from the UK. Ain't nobody really saying shit about what he just pulled the past couple of days. And the shit that he came out with the last day. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A few days ago, if you don't know, I'm telling you now, he came out on Twitter and was like, yo, I'm about to have a big announcement. Now, of course, this is in the aftermath of the Tony Bellew, BJ Flores fight. And we yeah. all know that David Hay, Tony Bellew been having beef that we're going to get into that in a minute here. So in the midst of that beef, David Hay just comes out of nowhere and is like, yo, I got an announcement to make. Stay tuned. Some motherfuckers like, oh shit, what he gonna yeah. do? Is he gonna fight Tony Bellew? Better yeah. hey, is he gonna fucking stop ducking Shannon Briggs? Yeah. So he comes out with a video on his Twitter, and in the video he's like, "All right, the moment you've been waiting for." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who, yeah. Who's going to be my next opponent? <laughs> this motherfucker said. I've been wanting to fight you. You. Yeah. Answer. <laughs> what? Now, mind you, his message is good. He talking about battling cancer. But, dog, <clears throat> don't put your fans or just boxing enthusiasts or boxing fans in general on yeah. notice thinking that your announcement is fucking boxing related. All right? And then you talking about fighting cancer, B. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. That's what I'm talking about, man. Like, David Hay been on some bullshit for a minute now, B. You know what I'm mm. Ever since getting his ass whooped, he talked all that shit about Vladimir Klitschko. And yeah. got in the ring, got his ass mollywopped. He been on bullshit ever mm. since then. What's this shit about uh, sh promising Shannon Briggs a fight? He's supposed to be fighting this month. This is what's happening in October. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Promise Shannon Briggs, hey, bro, you fight on my undercard, you know, me against, Andre, or what's the motherfucker's name? Arnold Man. Jimmer Jabber. You know what Arnold, I'm saying? Yeah, Schwarzenegger or something yeah. like that. I don't know. After I beat Tom Cruise the third, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we get to fight in October. This is back in May. Yeah. So after Shannon Briggs knocked out whoever the fuck he fought, <laughs> we're all like, oh, shit, it's about to be David A. Shannon Briggs this October. Because yep. that's what he said it was going to happen, right? Yep, yep. So, 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 after that happened, he just completely just shut the fuck up on the fight. And, of course, it's October right now. No fight, B. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Shit, fuck out this boy. Been, as a matter of fact, the tweet right before that when he says, I got an announcement to make. Stay tuned. Shannon Briggs, I couldn't find this shit, but I seen it uh, the day that he put Oh, it. yeah. You saw that shit? Yeah. Shannon yeah. Briggs put a tweet right under that and was like, yeah, motherfucker gonna come out the closet as a transgender. <laughs> <laughs> That's his big yeah. announcement. You know what I'm saying? He been fucking with him since May. Fight the nigga. I know. Especially after you made the promise. Man, what do you think about this bullshit, man? Man, this is just fucking retarded. I don't get it with David Hay, man. I really don't. And, you know, it kind of, you know, uh, uh, let me preface my com my comments. I'm not talking shit about David Hay saying that he's going to fight cancer. That's a just cause, I understand. But as a boxing fan, when you're waiting for a fighter to announce a fight and they act as if they're going to announce a fight and they announce something different, that's bullshit. You know, we, 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 we've been waiting for David Hay to fight someone, you know, Shannon Briggs, who's been calling him out and just who's been tormenting him for months, yep. you know, or 
at least give us something. You know, I, I, I like you said, he's coming off, or Tony Tony Bella was coming off of his defeat against BJ Flores. We all seen what happened after that fight, where Tony Bella looked like he wanted to, you know, jump out the ring and take the gloves off and fight David Hay right then and there. You know, so I mean, just the fact that. Hay has done absolutely nothing since he's came back from retirement. I mean, he hasn't done anything. He hasn't fought nobody of note, you know. So the fact that he's playing these little dumbass games and he's saying, I've got a big announcement to make, and then he comes out and says, I've always wanted to fight you, cancer. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get out of here with that, man. That's something that you do in your leisure time, you know, and you're in your and you're out of the ring time, you know. Uh, when 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 you're talking about fighting or big announcements, fans want to hear a name after that. Especially you know, I'm, when he, especially when he's got a motherfucker that's that he promised to fight you yeah, know, absolutely. five months ago, and then now he's got a motherfucker that's actually been you know, uh, uh, trying to, or is in recent uh, times anyway, wanting to get a fight with him, right? He's yeah. even gone so far back as to bring up some shit that happened at, when he was an amateur. He said he he dropped David yeah. Hay when he was an amateur, and he said uh, David Price was giving him that him, work. Yeah, him and David Price ran a, ran, yeah, him and David Price ran a train on him. Word, word. Yeah. <laughs> word. And he's out, and you know he's out here bullshitting, man. So I honestly do not understand what David Hay is doing with his career. I solely think he only wants big fights, like purely. He doesn't want to fight anybody that is underneath us, uh, underneath um, his whatever his qualifications are. You know, it's just bullshit. I mean, come on, dude, fight somebody. Somebody, man, you got Shannon Briggs just going at you. Come, I, I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Where's the dude that hit Derek Chisora in the face with a bottle? Where's that dude at? You know? <laughs> you know I mean, damn, man. man. Take this old whack-ass David Hay and put him back in retirement. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I got to take sus and shit for that one. Yeah, what? Well. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Like, you know. And another thing before I move on to the next topic, B, his his message might not even be received the way that he would like it to be received. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a just cause. It's a, it's an excellent thing that he's wanting to do, an excellent, yeah. an excellent campaign that he's wanting to push. But when you tell a whole bunch of boxing fans that you have a major announcement and people really have been trying yeah. to figure out what you've been wanting to do for the last five months any fucking way... And yep. then you come out with this shit. Mother, I guarantee you, when niggas clicked on the video, they probably did exactly what I did. They clicked on the video. They listened to his little suspense, his suspenseful buildup. And then yeah. as soon as he said the word cancer, they stopped the fucking video. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> thousands of other motherfuckers did it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I and mean, judging by the comments, a bunch of motherfuckers, they were pissed off. Like, yeah. oh, you don't tell us. You got a big announcement, and then you say cancer. Get the exactly. fuck out of here, David. Hey. <laughs> exactly. You, I mean, people have to understand who um, who David Hay appeals to. He appeals to boxing fans, fans that are only concerned with boxing. So when you make this type of uh, announcement, like you said, and you frame it as if you're going to give the fans – something to go off of that's going to propel you into a fight, and then you come out with something that has nothing to do with boxing, you can't help but feel slighted in a way, you know, as a boxing fan. So I'm with you 100%, man. I, I, like I said, kudos to him for doing um, the whole cancer thing. But at the end of the day, uh, he could have framed this much, much, much better. It could have been done much better. So it is what it is. Next! <clears throat> so what news you got for me, dog, about uh, our two-time Olympic gold medalist, Miss hey. Jones, and her pro debut? Well, you know what, 2K? It's looking real nice for um, Clarissa Shields right now, man. Oh, yeah? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I thought she was going to try the 3 P, 
But there's a lot of talk surrounding her making her um uh making her debut November nineteenth on the War Kovalev undercard. Okay. Yep, and what so far how it's looking is we don't have an opponent for her, but they are trying to negotiate getting her on the card. The only thing is main events has a completely different position than Rock Nation. Rock Nation wants to put Clarissa Shields as the opener, which I think would be great. I think having a woman boxing match televised on pay-per-view, um, which is something that hasn't been done in a very long time, um, especially, especially if Clarissa Shields can go out there and actually put on, um, uh, put on a show, that would be very, very, very nice for women's boxing. Only thing is, Main Events does not want her fight televised. They want to open the show with a Main Events contract, uh, uh, contracted fighter and a uh, Rock Nation contracted fighter going head to head. So that's where it is right now, but it does look like she's going to make her pro debut November 19th for sure. It's just not finalized whether it's going to be non-televised or televised. Me personally, like I said, I think it should be televised. I think it's a great chance to propel women's boxing out there, and it's a great chance to get something that fans aren't used to seeing on pay-per-view. I mean, we all know the guys are going to fight. Everybody knows that, regardless of who, regardless of who it is. Right. You know, and it being a and it being a show opener, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, an American at that. I mean, what more could you ask for? You know. I agree. I agree. I think it's uh, what you said earlier. It's great for women's boxing. Um, it's something that it needs to be explored, man, because the only, the only problem I have with it is we have an undisputed champion in women's boxing, <laughs> and that's the beautiful. The beautiful <laughs> Cecilia Braggers, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you, you better look around when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> word up, word up. But, yo, know, like. She deserves to be on television the way that she's been dominating the women's welterweight division, B. And it, it's kind of fucked up that we got a woman who just comes straight out of the amateurs and automatically beca- uh, starts to open up for a major fight, probably the biggest yeah. fight of 2016. Absolutely. Open it. Now, that's where it's, you know, I'm on, I'm on the fence. Now, maybe I shouldn't give a damn about <laughs> about uh, uh, Cecilia Brackett not being able to, to be on television uh, when she should, because this is for the betterment of women's boxing as a whole, right? Yes, so yeah. I should be able to take, oh, shit, Clarissa Shields, that's what's up. She's going to bring light to women's boxing, especially if she goes out there on national television and knocks some bitch out. You know what I'm saying? Hey. That's like, <laughs> yeah. you know that's like, word up, word up. So mad people who buy the pay-per-view or who's streaming it and they see that, they're going to be like, who is this girl? I'm about to start watching women's boxing. That's the exactly. Story. But still, man, I just, I still feel Cecilia Brackett should get that opportunity. Oh, uh, no doubt. Like how she destroyed uh, Ann Sophie Mathis in two rounds. Oh, uh, yeah. Was an excellent opener. Unfortunately, there was no Absolutely. fights going on, you know, yeah. on pay-per-view or any major fights going on at that time where she could have opened, but... That shit would have been perfect, B. But, yeah, I think overall it's a good thing, man. I hope uh, they go the Rock Nation route um, yeah. and they actually put a girl, a female. Because I think, shit, we haven't had that since Christy Martin. I, I believe Layla Ali may have headlined. I mean, not yeah. headlined, but opened up. Uh, opened up a show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure she has. But the, the last memorable motherfucker that continuously opened up cards was – uh, Christy Martin, and that's mainly because she was yeah. opening up cards for the popular Mike Tyson at that time. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. Um, yep. nobody well, me, has had that impact since then. So we we do we need a woman to do that, man. We really do. Absolutely, I think I think it would be great. And to your point, if um, if Clarissa Shields can go in there and get a Cecilia Brackett type two round stoppage yeah. as an opener, that yeah. sets the tone for the whole night. You know, um, hopefully, like you, like you alluded to, hopefully they go to Rock Nation route, and hopefully uh, Main Events is willing 
to kind of take a chance. I mean, let's be honest about it. Even if Clarissa Shields fight, to me, that's a gift for the viewers. You know, um, seeing a two-time Olympic gold medalist woman opening up a show, that's a gift for the viewers. But everybody's really, regardless of who fights, everybody's watching the show to see Kovalev versus War. Mm. You know, um, but I, I want to throw this at you, and I also want to throw this question at, uh, to the viewers who are watching the show. Would you guys rather see Clarissa Shields, two-time Olympic gold medalist, open the show, or would you rather see a unknown uh, main event fighter and an unknown uh, Rock Nation fighter open the show. Now, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but let's just be honest. Typically, people that open the show are, you know, prospects, and sometimes they're very, very, very little known prospects, yeah. you know? So, so it's almost like pick your poison, you know? Which would you guys prefer? Would you, like I said, would you prefer the Clarissa Shields route? Or would you prefer two fighters that we really don't know going against each other? Well, you know, I'd be watching, you know, the wackest niggas in the ring. You know yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'd be super wack. I'll watch <laughs> yeah. the fight, you know what I'm saying? Just so oh, I can word. find a gem, you know what I'm saying, that I could yep. talk about before anybody knows who the guy is, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. In this scenario, Doug, like, Clarissa Shields was a dominant amateur fighter. She yeah. dominated the Olympics to the point where she was just fucking around and shit in the latter <laughs> rounds of the Olympics and route to gold. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be a, and, and, and then on top of that, it's, it's when I just, I've always felt women's boxing needs to be on a grand stage. You know, so yeah. I feel the same way about women's basketball. Actually, women's Absolutely. basketball, they play harder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And women's boxing, they fucking fight harder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Money has not taken over the sport when it comes to the women. So exactly. the shit needs to be on a grand on a grand stage, and putting Clarissa Shields there it gives it the opportunity to become that, become a, 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 a absolutely that has a spotlight on it. So I'd rather go that route, most definitely. Yeah, there we go. Yep. All right, next man, this shit <clears throat> pissed me the fuck off, dog. When I saw this news, b so. Uh -oh. Uh, we did a video a little while back, not too long ago, a couple weeks back, talked about uh, a potential matchup between Vladimir Klitschko and Anthony Joshua. And yeah. we mentioned in that video that the only thing holding it up were the rulings of the belts, uh, the yeah. organizations, um, trying to decide whether or not they're going to sanction this fight. What I didn't know was that uh, at that point in time, Anthony Joshua is not ranked and uh, I hadn't checked the WBC, but I know he's not ranked in the WBO and he's not ranked in the WBA. Um, oh. Recently, the WBA um, is pending a decision on whether or not they want to sanction Joshua Klitschko. Uh, Eddie Hearn has come out, basically said it, it looks like the fight is a no-go, not because the WBA may not sanction the fight, but because Vladimir Klitschko has already moved in a different direction. Um, he's saying, hey, mm. I'm not fighting Anthony Joshua unless the WBA jumps in with the WBO and the IBO. And then, of course, um, you know, Anthony Joshua has the IBF. Unless they jump in with, with the rest of the belts, I'm not fighting this motherfucker, even for $36 million, right? Mm. But he's already kind of gone another route. They're talking about, and this is more than likely done, B. It's probably going to happen. Mm. Vladimir Klitschko versus Lucas Brown for the WBA heavyweight title. Now, this is my mm. problem, B. Now, this is my motherfucking problem. <laughs> Lucas Brown just fought Ruslan Shagaev for the WBA title. He wins. What happens right after he wins? He pisses uh, off. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Motherfuckers caught taking PEDs. Yeah. So they strip him, right? Meanwhile, Luis Ortiz, the baddest heavyweight in the game right now, off paper, okay? Yeah. He is the interim WBA champion. On top of that, he is the number one contender, meaning he is double the mandatory. You could be the interim title holder and not the number one contender. He's both, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Double yeah. the fucking mandatory, all right? They were trying to jerk him. After the damn uh, Brown Shagaev fight. Because what happened yeah. was 
the WBA stripped Brown, gave the belt back to Shagaev. Then based on the result of uh, Fresno Kendo versus Shagaev, which was the fight before the Lucas Brown fight for Shagaev, based on that result, which was a majority decision win for Shagaev, the WBA said, hey, we didn't agree with that decision either. So we're going to promise Fresno Kendo, who is like, 4,900 years old right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to yeah. promise him a shot at the title since Lucas Brown pissed hot. So the next title fight going to be Fresno Kendo versus Ruslan Shagae part two. Fuck Lewis mm. Ortiz. We, we don't give a fuck about that, nigga. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, in due time, Ruslan Shagae, he retires. And in retirement, he relinquishes the belt. So I was like, yeah. oh, shit. The belt's vacant. It's got to be Luis Ortiz versus somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. Vladimir Klitschko is ranked number two at, in the WBA. Luis Ortiz is ranked number one. Mmm. Mm, right? Yeah. <laughs> Vladimir Klitschko versus Luis Ortiz. Only makes perfect fucking makes, sense. Yeah, there you go. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Plus, Luis Ortiz just signed a new fucking contract with Matchroom, which yeah. does... Heavy business with, uh, I believe, is he with uh, Frank Warren, Vladimir Klitschko? Uh, I think uh, I think he is. Well, regardless is he... whoever he's fucking with, you two help us out. If he, yeah, help Frank us, help Warren. us. Regardless, they do business with Germany and them motherfuckers over there. Okay? Yeah. So it's an easy fight to make right now. Okay? You can have it in Germany. I doubt Luis Ortiz gives a fuck. He'll fight you mm -hmm. in Germany. Okay? So yep. why are we not why and then he's been calling him out, calling him he Luis Ortiz is on record recently saying all the heavyweights are pussies. He recently said <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so why are we not why are we not watching Luis Ortiz versus Vladimir Klitschko December 10th? Why did Luis Ortiz have to fight Malik Scott? Oh, Isn't that insane? Knocked out in the first round by Deontay uh, Wilder. Oh, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad, Suke. That's the same dude. You, you absolutely right. That, but that's the same guy that I think got knocked out by a punch that barely even landed from Deontay Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Isn't that the Come same on, guy? Man. That got knocked down by garbage can, doo doo face smelling ass, <laughs> Derek Chisora. Oh. Got knocked down and stayed on the ground until like nine and then tried to jump up real quick and they counted him out and then the nigga tried to argue. Motherfucker, why'd you stay on the ground till uh, nine? <laughs> Man, get this out of here, B. Just because he beat uh, 89 year old Tony Thompson. Get this oh out of here, God. man. He should not be fighting Luis Ortiz. <laughs> Luis Ortiz needs a fucking shot. Get this man uh, his well-deserved shot, B. Exactly. Man, this is ridiculous. This is more fuckery that's going on in <sighs> these organizations, B. How yep. do you know about this bullshit-ass fight that might be uh, lost? It's not signed, but it's more than likely going to happen. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, I'm 100% I'm with you, man. This is absolute bullshit, man. More fuckery. And they're dragging the fans through the mud again. They're going to prolong this whole WBA, WBO, IBF, IBO bullshit. They're going to prolong this whole journey to Klitschko getting the titles back or fighting guys or fighting around guys. It's just more and more bullshit, man. This was a great fight. This was a great fight. When we talked about it, I actually favored Klitschko. Right. Over Joshua, but I don't understand why would you walk away from thirty six million dollars? I just don't get it. And you're fighting Lucas Brown, really? Come on, man! It's like at least give us a reason to watch these fucking fights. Yeah. I mean, damn! Give me a reason to waste an hour or two hours out of my day, you know, aside from me just being a boxing fanatic. Like, I mean, fuck, man. Can we get anything worth watching? The heavyweight division is quickly heating up, 
And these guys could have definitely set the tone, man, with the fight in December. Oh, yeah. You know? And from my understanding, it's looking like they're going to fight on the exact same date, December 10th. Lucas Brown, Vladimir Klitschko will be televised on HBO, I believe. And uh, uh, Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pula will be on the same day, December 10th, and it's going to be televised by Showtime. It's just bullshit. Now, I don't really have a problem with the Joshua Kubrat Pula fight. I really don't have a problem. Exactly. To me, and to you, that's actually a good fight. I don't mind that fight because... Um, Anthony Joshua, I believe, needs more experience anyway. He's only, what, 17 and 0? Yeah. So he needs a fight like that. Kubrat Pulev has been in uh, the ring with Vladimir Klitschko. He got beat pretty good, but he was at least in there with him. So what I think is they're going to, uh, like you said, they're going to skate around Lucas Ortiz. Uh, Lucas, I'm sorry, not Lucas Ortiz. <laughs> uh. They're going to skate around um, uh, Ortiz because... You already know what you're getting when you get in the ring with him. Yeah. And that's, and you know, that's punishing, punishing punches, great movement, yeah. high boxing IQ. Yeah. You already know what you're getting. And Vladimir don't want the problems right now. What I can see happening is these two guys fighting on the same day, and, and they negotiate this fight for mid-2017 or some shit like that. It, it's just bullshit, man. How do you feel about... um? What I said a long time ago, I said right after Luis Ortiz knocked out Bryant Jennings, yep. this motherfucker <laughs> will be the most avoided heavyweight from here on out. And we said uh, they won't even get a nigga a shot. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, man. You, you were absolutely right. You were absolutely right. Um, at the time or slightly before that, um, I didn't really see it. You know, I really didn't see it. I, I, I remember you mentioning uh, uh, Luis Ortiz, and I was like, okay, check him out. I started, you know, checking him out, and when I seen the Brian Jennings fight, I was just like, man, yeah, I don't see any of these heavyweights fighting him. I don't even see my man Deontay Wilder fighting him right now because he's, very, he's just a very, very, very dangerous guy. You know, um, he's got big knockout power. He can move. And he does a lot with his height and his weight to be 6'4". You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He does a lot with his height and his weight, you know, and he's bringing a lot of power to the table. So I don't really see a lot of these guys fighting him. I absolutely agree with you. Um, I don't know when he's going to get an actual title, you know, uh, it, 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 it really sucks for him, though, man. I mean, Malik Scott, come on, man, guys. Get that bum out of here, B. Like, Deontay Wilder is more willing to help the enemy and Tyson Fury get over his depression and yeah. shit than take a fight with Luis Ortiz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next! <sighs> and the last of this segment. So... Recently, the WBO, the WBO has ordered the Joseph Parker versus Andy Ruiz fight to also take place on December 10th. Now, oh, wow. Right. Now, this fight is not signed. It's not set in stone. Um, the WBO just basically made a decision that they will order it uh, for their vacant title since Tyson Fury just recently dropped it. Um, the winner, however, has four months to face the mandatory who is David Hay or the most ranked or the next ranked contender who is, in my opinion, Vladimir Klitschko. I think he's ranked number two in the WBO. Um, mm. And number five is Hughie Fury. Um, <laughs> but they mentioned that nigga Huggy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's yeah, the next exactly. Guy after David Hay. What do you think about this, man? Uh, I mean, I like the fight. I love the fight. Joseph Parker, Andy Ruiz, we know uh, it's been confirmed by both guys. You know, no, normally fighters deny, but these guys both confirm this, that they sparred each other. Joseph Parker said that's the hardest he's ever been hit. Yeah, he said. He said go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said, 
said he couldn't eat for three days. Yep. Yep. So this is a very, very compelling fight. I like it. You know, these are the type of fights that we need. These are the kind of fights that we deserve, you know. Um, so I definitely, definitely like this fight. I'm a bit upset that David Hayes, the next guy in line, um, he hasn't done anything, you know, to warrant this type of a shot. But I guess it is what it is. And I'm hoping I used to really like David Hay. I was pretty high on him. But um, at this point, I don't really, I don't really get two shits about him right now, man. Nah, man. Um, uh, you know the bullshit that he put with Shannon Briggs. I thought that, I thought that was wrong. You know, you yeah. guaranteed the guy a fight. Uh, 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 um, uh, apparently, according to Shannon Briggs, I think he said something like he fought for free on uh, 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 David Hay's undercard or some shit like that. I could be wrong, wow. but I'm, but I believe that's what Shannon Briggs said. You know, just to get that fight. And the fact that David Hay didn't fight him is just more bullshit, man. So he's the next guy in line. Um, I don't even care about him getting a shot. It is what it is. Um, but the fight between Joseph Parker and Andy Ruiz, I commend both of these guys for stepping up. Mm. Um, Andy Ruiz, to me, he's really a guy that, that I'm really trying to grasp, you know, uh, uh, my mind around. Right. Um, I've I've heard a lot of things about him in sparring. Um, I've seen him fight. Uh, he's not the prototypical heavyweight um, in terms of body build. He's a uh, he's kind of a and this is no offense to him, but he's kind of a sloppy build guy. But um, he's a very good uh, puncher. Packs a lot of power in his punches, and he's very 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 skilled. Um, and also, what I'm hearing is. He's got pretty good hand speed yeah. for what he looks like. Yes, he does. You know, so I think he's one of those guys that just he's he's just all across the board. He's very deceptive. He's he, 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 he you think you're getting one thing when you look at him, but when you hear that bell rings, he just blows you away. And if you're not ready for it or if you're not expecting it, he's going to knock you out. Yeah. Good thing about Joseph Parker is he's been in there with him at least this morning. And I know that Joseph Parker has gotten better since that sparring. And uh, Joseph Parker himself brings a lot of uh, a lot of different things to the ring. You know, uh, Parker is your prototypical looking heavyweight. I think he's about six four, somewhere around there. Um, kind of has the heavyweight build, um, just in terms of his body. Right. Um, but he himself has pretty fast hands. We've seen that um, on display. It, it, exactly, exactly. Very good footwork, uh, good hand speed, those pretty good combinations. Uh, the only problem that I'm going to go back to is the Carlos to Cam fight. Yeah. I thought yeah. that he had problems with uh, uh, to Cam. So it's going to be really interesting to see him get in the ring with a guy that he said, that he admittedly said, damn near, you know. Uh, 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 broke his jaw. It sound like you know. If a nigga can't eat for eat three, days, three days, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's you know that's 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 pretty crucial, man. You know. Um. So I'm interested in the fight. I want to see it. You know. Hopefully it gets finalized and we can just really, really, really uh, uh, uh dig into this fight and break it down. Um. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, it's a good fight. <clears throat> it's <clears throat> a lot of people are already picking Joseph Parker again. They jump oh, the wow. gun just like they're jumping the gun with uh, Vladimir Klitschko and Anthony Joshua. Uh, Joseph Parker is a, a decent fighter. Uh, he's very good for an up-and-coming guy. He would be a very yeah. good challenge for Anthony Joshua. That's probably why they're milking the shit out that fight. They're not going to make that fight anytime soon. Um, yeah. But uh, Andy Ruiz is probably in the same boat. Those two guys are probably equal as far as uh, prestige level at this point in both of their careers. Mm. Um, my thing about Andy Ruiz is two things. Number one, he just fought in July and then he just fought uh, in September. I think it was September 9th or September 10th. Mm. He uh, went 10 rounds with Franklin Lawrence, who is a journeyman. <clears throat> and uh, mm. he's going to be fighting again, possibly December 10th. So that'll be three times in uh, the course of five months. Now, that could be a good or a bad thing. Bad thing is it could be too much wear on, tear on your body, right? The obvious. The yeah. thing is, according to him... If he's not fighting or if he's not continuously in training camp, then he's not focused. 
Um, mm -hmm. So to him, this is a good thing that he's having fights uh, this close and in this short amount of time because it keeps him focused, uh, which also pretty much um, would be a uh, – it, it would be a resolution to his weight problem. His weight problem is worse yeah. than Chris Ariola's. Chris Ariola's is just documented. He comes out into the public. And he tells you that he ate nothing but fucking tacos and burritos and the migras and shit like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Leading up to the fight. But mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Ruiz is undocumented. But if you look at his weigh-ins through over the course of his career, he's weighed in as high as 290 plus. Oh! As low as in the 240 range. Um, this wow. is like a 50-something pound difference. You know what I'm saying? So mm. uh, he's, he's much worse than Chris Ariola as far as... Uh, yeah. Uh, maintaining his weight keeping his weight under control so that's the other elephant in the room uh will he show up into this fight off fat and shit and comparing uh, apparently to him that won't happen because his fights have been close and uh, yeah. a, a, a low time period so this is an intriguing fight man I'm, I'm curious to see what happens um they're both ranked uh respectively joseph parker number one andrew ruiz number three uh klitschko is at number two okay um okay. so it, it'll be uh it, it, you know some people think that klitschko should get the shot for this WBO title, um, mm -hmm. if the uh, if this fight is actually um, taking place, it has an argument because the two guys are ranked within the top five. So it's all mm -hmm. good, man. And plus, it'll be a nice little setup for uh, Joseph Parker and Anthony Joshua. Both guys will be holding belts. Possibly oh yeah, if he gets past Andy Ruiz. Yep. Uh, all right, that's gonna conclude this segment. You two, do what you're doing. The comment section will be real. This is real talk for real fans. One.